This is a LibriVox recording. Candide by Voltaire. Chapter 8. The History of Cunegonde. I was in bed fast asleep when it pleased God to send the Bulgarians to our delightful castle of Thunder Tin Trunk. They slew my father and brother and cut my mother in pieces. A tall Bulgarian, six feet high, perceiving that I had fainted away at this sight, began to ravish me. This made me recover. I regained my senses. I cried, I struggled, I bit, I scratched. I wanted to tear out the tall Bulgarian's eyes, not knowing that what happened at my father's house was the usual practice of war. The brute gave me a cut in the left side with his hanger, and the mark is still upon me. Ah, I hope I shall see it, said honest Candide. "'You shall,' said Cunegonde. "'But let us continue.' "'Do so,' replied Candide. Thus she resumed the thread of her story. "'A Bulgarian captain came in, saw me all bleeding, and the soldier not in the least disconcerted. The captain flew into a passion at the disrespectful behaviour of the brute, and slew him on my body. He ordered my wounds to be dressed, and took me to his quarters as a prisoner of war.' I washed the few shirts that he had, I did his cooking, he thought me very pretty, he avowed it. On the other hand, I must own he had a good shape, and a soft and white skin, but he had little or no mind or philosophy, and you might see plainly that he had never been instructed by Dr. Pangloss. In three months' time, having lost all his money, and being grown tired of my company, he sold me to a Jew named Don Issachar, who traded to Holland and Portugal, and had a strong passion for women. This Jew was much attached to my person, but could not triumph over it. I resisted him better than the Bulgarian soldier. A modest woman may be ravished once, but her virtue is strengthened by it. In order to render me more tractable, he brought me to his country house. Hitherto I had imagined that nothing could equal the beauty of Thunder Tin Trunk Castle, but I found I was mistaken. The Grand Inquisitor, seeing me one day at Mass, stared long at me, and sent to tell me that he wished to speak on private matters. I was conducted to his palace, where I acquainted him with the history of my family, and he represented to me how much it was beneath my rank to belong to an Israelite. A proposal was then made to Don Issachar that he should resign me to my lord. Don Issachar, being the court banker and a man of credit, would hear nothing of it. The inquisitor threatened him with an auto de fe. At last my Jew, intimidated, concluded a bargain by which the house and myself should belong to both in common. The Jew should have for himself Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and the Inquisitor should have the rest of the week. Ah, it is now six months since this agreement was made. Quarrels have not been wanting, for they could not decide whether the night from Saturday to Sunday belonged to the old law or to the new. For my part, I have so far held out against both, and I verily believe that this is the reason why I am still beloved. At length, to avert the scourge of earthquakes, and to intimidate Don Issachar, my Lord Inquisitor was pleased to celebrate an auto da fe. He did me the honour to invite me to the ceremony. I had a very good seat, and the ladies were served with refreshments between Mass and the execution. I was, in truth, seized with horror at the burning of those two Jews, and of the honest Biscainer who had married his godmother, but what was my surprise, my fright, my trouble, when I saw in a San Benito and mitre a figure which resembled that of Pangloss? I, I rubbed my eyes, I looked at him attentively, I saw him hung, I fainted. Scarcely had I recovered my senses than I saw you stripped, stark naked, and this was the height of my horror, consternation, grief, and despair. I tell you truthfully that your skin is yet whiter and of a more perfect color than that of my Bulgarian captain. This spectacle redoubled all the feelings which overwhelmed and devoured me. I screamed out, and would have said, Stop, barbarians! but my voice failed me, and my cries would have been useless after you had been severely whipped. 
how is it possible said i that the beloved candide and the wise pangloss should both be at lisbon the one to receive a hundred lashes and the other to be hanged by the grand inquisitor of whom i am the well-beloved pangloss most cruelly deceived me when he said that everything in the world is for the best agitated lost sometimes beside myself and sometimes ready to die of weakness my mind was filled with the massacre of my father mother and brother with the insolence of the ugly bulgarian soldier with the stab that he gave me with my servitude under the bulgarian captain with my hideous don issachar with my abominable inquisitor with the execution of dr pangloss with the grand miserere to which they whipped you and especially with the kiss i gave you behind the screen the day that i had last seen you i praised god for bringing you back to me after so many trials and i charged my old woman to take care of you and to conduct you hither as soon as possible she has executed her commission perfectly well i have tasted the inexpressible pleasure of seeing you again of hearing you of speaking with you Oh, but you must be hungry for myself i am famished let us have supper they both sat down to table and when supper was over they placed themselves once more on the sofa where they were when signor don issachar arrived it was the jewish sabbath and issachar had come to enjoy his rights and to explain his tender love end chapter eight this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Candide by Voltaire, read by Ted DeLorme in Fort Mill, South Carolina, during January 2007.